are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day with amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Happy Thirsty Thursday. I am Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. I'm also the founder of Whole9Sports.com where you can find all of my written work. Today, we'll talk about some of my predictions for the Week 2 game against the South Florida Bulls. Breaking T released their NIL Top 25, so we'll talk about some Gators and NIL and how they would all play into that Top 25, and we'll wrap up by reviewing some of the comments made by Todd Grantham in a press conference the other day because um, I have opinions about them. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to follow Locked on Gators wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to Locked on Gators on YouTube because you know we're doing visual work and I don't want to exclude anybody. So even if you prefer listening to the podcast, some days it might be better to actually watch if possible. And check out my pinned tweet on Twitter. That's WNS underscore Brandon. And let Locked on know why the Florida Gators have the best fans in the nation because, I mean, we all know it's really not close. Taking a look at my week two predictions, I'll start off with the obvious one that i mentioned yesterday um we're gonna throw the ball a lot i think but i i think this is going to be a game where the gators come out and obviously last week our rushing attack was fantastic because here's it was consistent so it wasn't just like big plays but it was consistent and it was explosive again i say it wasn't just big plays we had huge huge plays in the ground game but it wasn't all big plays it's not like um a lot of people bring this up with Saquon Barkley, where it's like, well, he has a ton of three-yard gains, and he breaks off a 60-yarder, and then his average looks better. That's not what happened with our Gators. We were consistent on the ground, and we had explosive big plays. But I think that you know the coaching staff is going to look at this week's game and say, okay, it's South Florida. Um, they're not a good football team this year. That's, that's just a fact. They're not a good football team this year. Should be an easy victory. Um, like I'm knocking on wood that I don't, I, I can, I can knock on wood so you guys can see me knock on wood. So you know that, uh, should be an easy victory, but who knows? Um, and we've got Bama next week, one dimensional teams, unless you're running the triple option. And even then Lord knows you're not going to be Bama. You need to be able to run the ball and throw the ball. We know this team can run the ball. We, we know that for a fact, this team is going to have at least a somewhat reliable rushing attack, but we need to throw the ball. So I think that, you know, we're going to find out who's going to be the better passer out of Emory and Anthony Jones, out of Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson. Um, Who's going to be the better passer. So we're going to throw the ball a ton and kind of, kind of establish that because granted, I I tweeted this earlier, stop thinking Emory Jones versus Anthony Richardson. I have to do the same thing. I have to stop thinking that because it's really not, one against the other. The two have very publicly and privately discussed that it's a two quarterback team. It's a two quarterback system. That's what we have to get used to. They support one another. They want each other to succeed because both of them realize I don't care if he plays well, if I play well, as long as we win, that's what's most important. And so I'm, I'm going to stop discussing it as a battle. I'll, I'll still discuss who's outperforming the other, but it's not a battle any longer, and I'm not going to treat it as such. But we need to figure out who's going to be the better passer and who's going to play more against Alabama because we need to have a passing attack if we're going to even maybe win that game. Even with a passing attack, they're a fantastic team. That's an NFL-caliber team, low-tier NFL. But still, NFL-caliber team that we're going to be going against. My next prediction, Zachary Carter is going to have another multi-sack game. He had three sacks against Florida Atlantic. I don't think he'll have three, but... I, I think he can get two because he was compl- dude was unstoppable against FAU. I don't see a way that South Florida, who's I think a worse team than Florida Atlantic, has a better chance of stopping him unless they start triple teaming guy. And then it's like, okay, well, and the rest of the D line that was having monster games, they're all just going to kill you. So I think you've got to just hope that you can stop him. And I, I don't think they'll be able to. And I'm excited because Zachary Carter, man, like last year he was our sack leader. And this year he's probably going to be our sack leader again. And he's 
possibly going to even double his production that he had last year. So excited for his start, excited for how he'll continue the year. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of his and I can't wait to see him. That's, I, I get that's not like a, a huge prediction, but I mean, the multi-sack game is nothing to scoff at. Like I'm still saying that for Zachary Carter. Next, um, I discussed this in the third segment yesterday, the 28 point spread. The Gators are going to cover it. Like that's that's where I'm at. I, I said yesterday, I was kind of talking myself into it during the over-under because during the over-under, I was like, yeah, the Gators can score a lot, but South Florida didn't score against NC State and we have a better defense than NC State. So I, I, I don't know how South, I mean, South Florida is going to score. I'm not going to say they're not. I, I don't, I don't like um, predicting a shutout because anything could happen. They can get a pick six, a fumble six, anything could happen. So I'm not going to say they're going to get shut out. I am going to say that our defense is better than NC State, who did shut them out. And I'm thinking that we can make more big plays defensively and lead to scores. So sure, I also think that we might give up more big plays because that seems to be the way we're trending. Um, But I'm very confident that this defense can make some plays and that this offense will eventually have big plays. Like I mentioned, like we're going to try to find our passing attack But our rushing attack is still an explosive rushing attack, which is weird to say because like it's like rushing attacks typically aren't supposed to be explosive, but we have an explosive rushing attack. So we'll have big plays at some point in the game. Almost definitely. (laughs) Um, Almost definitely. It's it's probably bound to happen with the explosive playmakers that we have. So, I mean, I'm, I'm confident. I'm pretty confident saying that we'll be able to cover that 28 point spread. We couldn't last week, but. I'm expecting, uh, I expect practice to be a bit rough this week for our Gators and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully be back on track and better than we were last week. Need something to do with your stimulus, tax refund, GameStop, Dogecoin, Bet Online, NIL money, whatever it is, wherever you get it, I don't care, I ain't pocket watching. Visit rockauto.com for all of your car parts needs. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. I do have a car. I have no idea how to work on it. Anytime that anybody's like, hey, you got to fix this. I'm like, I don't even know what, I don't even know if, is that in the hood? Is that, I don't know where that is. Is that under the car? So I'm just completely lost with it. But even I can navigate the website when I need anything. So that's wonderful. And I'm very thankful for that. Whether it's brake pads, taillights, or you just want to add hydraulics, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, whether it's for your classic or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Fox? So they know exactly who sent you. Taking a look at the Breaking T NIL Top 25. For those of you who don't know Breaking T, it's a t-shirt company. They've been doing a lot of NIL work and they released their own Top 25. It's based on fan engagement data, um, which I'm assuming is a lot of uh social media mentions retweets things like likes like things like that um and breaking tea retail partner demand so i'm they again not, they didn't really go super in depth on these but i'm assuming that they mean uh, like they said they're real retail partners like dick sporting goods and a few other places i'm assuming it's places that are like hey we want to order more shirts for that guy um anthony richardson is the only gator on the list uh, again, it's a top 25 going with the college top 25 theme that, that you know, that's around. Um, Anthony Richardson is the only Gator on the list. He is at number 19. Um, of course, it, it's a very quarterback heavy list, a very quarterback running back heavy list. Uh, the top three are all quarterbacks. It's Bryce Young from Alabama, CJ Stroud from Ohio State, and Will Levis from Kentucky. Uh, so it, it's very quarterback heavy because, again, a lot of this is retail partner demand. And at that point, it's like, well, who are they going to want? The quarterback, who's typically, generally um, the, the face of the team. So, yes, quarterbacks are obviously favored here. Uh, it's very heavily skewed to quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Not really. Obviously, in the O-line, uh, there's like one tight end on the list. I think it's Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. Um, and even then, he's an honorable mention, if I'm not wrong. There's not many defensive players. I think it's like two DBs and like no edge defenders and the D-line linebackers, none of that. Um, but Anthony Richardson's number 19 on the list. Obviously, the fan engagement data probably skyrocketed with his hurdle was one of the most beautiful hurdles I've ever seen. Again, scared the life out of me that he even attempted it because I, I played 
corner and some wide receiver and this some tight end and I try to hurdle. I got it the first time. I tried it again, got lit up, and I was like, never doing that again. Um, so I would I would like to not see our quarterback do it, whether he's you know, we, we've had, we've got two starters. So I would like to see one of our quarterbacks not do it. Um, but uh, I'm sure that he can even climb that list if he has another strong performance. And then Bama, I'm assuming he's going to have a big – I'm at this point, I'm thinking Anthony Richardson is a freak athlete. Um, he's going to have at least one explosive play per week. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. So who knows? Uh, people that aren't on the list that I think uh, – I don't want to say should be, but – I would think would be um, Kair Elam is like the first name I think of, because if you're looking at any defenders that are going to be on the list, it's going to be DBs or edge rushers. Um, Kair Elam is one of the best defensive backs in all of college football, not just the SEC. Um, and he is, I mean, really, really good. He's been really good and he had a good game last week. So I would think he'd be on the list. Unfortunately he's not, but whatever. Um, I think he'll get on the list if he, you know, continues a strong campaign this year. Uh, he's a Thorpe candidate. Uh, Thorpe, if you don't know, is a Jim Thorpe Award, which goes to the best defensive back in the nation, which the, it, it's very weird to me that it's called the Jim Thorpe Award because he was a running back. <laughs> so so it's just a little weird to me, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, another name, Zachary Carter. I just mentioned him in the last segment. I think he's going to have another multi sack game. And if he... Uh, if he continues to be the dominant force that he is, because he's not just dominating on the field as a pass rusher, he's a very good run defender. And that's one of my favorite things about him is that he's a balanced defensive lineman, which is something that typically you don't see in guys until they get to the NFL. That's a big thing where you see guys that are skilled pass rushers or skilled run stoppers. There's very few guys that are skilled both. So, in college at least so that's why it's like i would think he's getting more love but again run defense typically gets no love to begin with so you know why, why, why i care about it um that's what i'm gonna say because fans are just some fans just don't just don't appreciate it um but zachary carter could find his way onto the list if he has another multi sack game this week and then he even gets one against bama's offensive line like he, he's got to be on the list he he's killing social media right now he's on social media he's having fun he's talking trash like to teammates and ever but you know he's he's having fun on social media he's having a blast with what he's doing and i mean i personally like we all know i'm a very big uh supporter of nil i represent an athlete with nil um said holt toledo band count on twitter you know um but i represent an athlete with nil so I, i'm a very big supporter of nil and i mean i think that breaking t's idea is a fantastic idea it's a fantastic list it's going to be awesome and fun to watch and uh i i genuinely i, I could see them having a uh, a weekly segment here to, here to talk about their list where gators are who could be climbing it who's falling all that fun stuff it, it's an awesome idea and proud of them for doing it because that that's just dope um Locked on Gators is now on YouTube. And I don't know if you can see it right now, but like I'm I'm dying over here. It's, it's very hot and I can't put the AC on because it's right next to me. And I am I'm a sweater. That, that that's just me. I, I sweat a lot. Like it, it's kind of gross. Um and you know, like a few weeks ago I was in Miami sweating through my shirt. Now sweating through it. Thank God it's dark because yes, that is uh not a good look to be on YouTube sweating like that. Uh enough about my sweat though but not really. Uh, I can use sweat block now, which I do generally use. Um, typically I do, but I, I've got to show that I, I am gross. Um, so the sweat block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants, which I've been trying. Uh, you simply apply it at night before bedtime, go to bed, and then bam, the next morning you wake up, go about your day without worrying about sweat guaranteed. And I know that sounds way too good to be true, but I only have to use it once or twice a week when I use it again. I didn't because I got a show that I'm kind of gross. Use promo code locked on to get 20% off at sweatblock.com or get it at Amazon or CVS. Again, promo code locked on to get 20% off at sweatblock.com. Week two is here, and I hope y'all make some money because I need to make some money too. So I hope y'all make money. Uh, on betonline.ag, the Gators are currently 28 point favorites this Saturday against South Florida, which I mentioned yesterday. And I mentioned it earlier today. Show Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Bet Online even covers award shows, TV shows, and reality TV. 
with real time updated odds and props on almost <clears throat> anything you can imagine. It is the best way to place your bets, and it's a hundred percent free to sign up. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a one hundred percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts make sure to use promo code locked on that is l-o-c-k-e-d no space o-n to get a 100 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit with betonline.ag now we're going to take a look at todd grantham comments um because i've i've been before i even get into that um i've been pretty uh critical i'll say about how our defensive scheme has been how i don't i don't like the play calling last year i didn't like the play calling last year not a huge fan of the play calling this past week i liked dialing up blitz at blitzes at random moments but for the most part wasn't a huge fan of what we uh what we showed or what we actually did so the other day todd grantham was giving a press conference and spoke about our coverage and i yeah i figured we should talk about it since it's something that i've been pretty critical of with him and um uh, grantham said that Playing press is a priority, um, which is, uh, if you've ever watched Drake and Josh, I believe it is, bullshaka, um, because that's just not true at all. Because, you know, I this is something that I've been talking about where we don't get physical at the line of scrimmage. Our Gators do not get physical at the line of scrimmage enough for me. Um, a third of the time, a third of our defensive snaps or defensive plays, whatever you want to call it, before the snap, uh, we had our corners more than five yards off the line of scrimmage. Um, might not sound like a huge issue because it's like, oh, it's a third of the snaps, but it, it, that's a that's a pretty significant amount of time. So a third of the snaps, we had players more than five yards off the line of scrimmage. And it's not just that they're six yards off. It's that we have guys where it's like third and third and four, and we're 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. And it's like, what are we doing here, guys? Like, Like a good team, is going to kill you if you do that. Like that, that's why that's my big problem playing off coverage. And don't get me wrong, I'm slow. So when I played, I played a lot of off coverage. Even if we were supposed to be pressing, I was like, hey, I'm slow and I'm skinny. So I'm not gonna be able to and by slow I mean like average speed, but I don't want to get beat deep. So I was like, I'm I'm not trying to get beat deep. So I'm gonna play off and then I'll just come up and play. And uh that's what I did, and I get it, but these are D1 athletes. <laughs> these are future pro football players. Uh, let them play up. And obviously, when I played, there wasn't nearly as much on the line as there is right now, where if you're playing if you're playing 12 yards off when it's third and four, they're just going to throw a quick slant, flat, whatever it is, and they're going to kill you and just pick up first downs all day. I get it being bend, don't break, but you can bend a bit less. You can be, you can be a bit sturdier there. Uh, he pointed out that on certain uh, offensive alignments, you can't play press coverage, which, yeah, that, that's true in some cases. Um, specifically, if you're looking at stacked receivers, uh, if you're looking at bunch sets, um, if guys are going in motion, you obviously, it, it's very difficult to press them because it's hard to press an object that's moving uh, <laughs> parallel to the line of scrimmage. So, uh, yes, in certain alignments, certain offensive shows, uh, it's difficult to play press coverage. That is 100% true. But the Gators were playing off off coverage in way too many situations where it was totally fine to press up if you'd like to. Um, again, that's going to kill us. Like Teams, uh, okay, we're going to play Bama next week. What, what was Mac Jones' biggest knock coming out of college? That, as accurate as he is, his offense was very just RPO slant, RPO bubble, things like that. They are going to murder us if we play off coverage. Like they're just going to RPO us to literal, not literal, but they're just going to RPO us to figurative death. They're going to kill us with it. Uh, the defense, they played well against Florida Atlantic. But again, we played off coverage far too often. If we do that against good teams, call, call the season a wrap. Just stop playing now if you're going to do that. Because again, if you do that against Bamba, if you do that against Georgia, Georgia, I think had, um, like it was 80% of the passing plays didn't go past five yards, like as in the ball didn't travel past five yards past the line of scrimmage, we're going to get murdered if we're playing off coverage and they want to do that. It's as simple as that. We're going to get killed if we keep doing this. Todd Grantham, I don't know why he said press is a priority. That is, as the kids say, cap. That's as simple as that. That is, that is as 
cap as cap can get. Uh, I hate myself for that. Don't worry about it. But that that's a horrible lie because he's shown for two years now, well, last season, this season, that press simply isn't uh, isn't a priority for him. So he's just lying there because the biggest complaint is that he's not playing press enough. Uh, and that's just, that's horrible because we need to play press more. We have the secondary that can play press. I am completely confident in literally every defensive back to play press coverage wherever they're lined up. Obviously, safeties probably shouldn't, but, you know, if we're in cover one or cover zero and they're playing up, play up. But again, they should be showing that they're going to be a little bit deeper. So it's it's a big question mark for me. It's also infuriating to me that Todd Grantham said the defense is the same as it was in the past. Is that supposed to be a good thing? Like, is that supposed to be comforting? Our defense sucked last year. You think that I'm going to be like, oh, well, well, good. At least things didn't change. At, le- at least teams know that uh, know that they have the blueprint already because they could just watch an entire season's worth of film last year and just kill us like they did all last year. They beat the beep out of us last year defensively because it was easy to break down what we were going to do. It was easy to expose our defense. And then Todd Grantham went, that's a good idea. Do the same thing. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing the same thing. And it, it's it's pitiful to watch this secondary play off knowing how much talent we have and knowing that they all have the talent and athleticism to play press like i mentioned like i played off because i wasn't athletic enough to cover if i missed up, if i messed up playing press these guys are insanely athletic let them play press coverage let them do their thing like they're they're fantastic they are fantastic secondary players like i have nothing but faith in them so really like the gators defense like you, you gotta pick it up. I'm, I'm not even sorry to say, Todd Grantham. Come on, it's, it, it, it's nut cutting time. You know, you gotta play press. You gotta let them know. You gotta get physical, get in their face, and let our DBs be great. That's what it's. That's the big issue too. It's like, let them be great. We have the secondary to do so. Let them be great. Let them put some pressure on this offense and let the pass rush hit home. Like that's, we have a good defense personnel this year. Linebackers questionable. Uh, second stringers kind of outperformed the first stringers last year or last week. And mm, I had some takes about the opening death chart with linebacker anyway. So yeah, bit my tongue. <laughs> that about it for today's episode of Locked On Gators. Join me tomorrow as we'll get into a full game preview of Saturday's game. Once again, my name is Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. You can find all of my written work with Whole9Sports.com. That is W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. Again, check out my Twitter feed, the pin tweet. Let Locked On know why Gators Nation is the best fan base in the nation because we are, baby. Be sure to check out Locked On Pit, hosted by Nick Faribault, part of the Locked On Podcast Network yesterday was the first episode of Locked On Pit, and I'm so excited to have Nick with the network. I can't wait to listen. You guys know I love him. He was here uh, two weeks ago, I believe it was. He's genuinely one of my favorite content creators around, whether it's football, gaming, music, whatever I pay attention to. He's one of my favorite content creators around, so so happy he's with Locked On. Betting on the Gators doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag wherever you listen to podcasts.